Hello, everyone. My name is Al Smith, and I'm the founder and director of Bishop Sheen today. I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Christmas Inspirations. And we've been sharing the Christmas story to you over the last few weeks and through the wisdom of this wise and holy man, Bishop Sheen, he put together a little booklet called Christmas Inspirations back in the year 1966. And you can see from the front cover, it explains that these are thoughts and illustrations to guide you and yours toward a fuller and more meaningful understanding of the Christmas season and what it should mean to all of us. And so we will share a reflection today simply entitled, Where Love and Child Are One. Please enjoy. Bishop Sheen writes, History is full of the names of men who have claimed that they have had a message from God. All of them without exception have appeared on the stage of history and said, here I am, believe me. Only one person in the world was ever pre-announced. Only one had his birth expected long before he came. So expected was the birth of Christ in Israel. In particular, so much did they await him that the teachers announced to the astrologers of the East the time and the place of his birth. The Lord born on Christmas Day is the only person in the world who had a prehistory, a prehistory to be studied not in the slime and muck of primeval jungles, but in the bosom of the Eternal Father. Not all children come into this world because of a distinct act of the will expressing itself in the love of man and woman. Even when the love between the two is willed, the fruit of love is conceived without their knowing it in some dark night of affection. Children are later on accepted and loved by their parents, but their decision to have a child did not necessarily beget a child, nor did their union produce an offspring. But in the birth of Christ, there was a collaboration between a woman and the spirit of divine love. She willed to be a mother, and motherhood began. Be it done to me according to thy will. Other mothers became conscious of motherhood through physical changes within them. Mary became conscious through spiritual change wrought by love. And it is likely that the spiritual ecstasy that she experienced when the Holy Spirit overshadowed her was greater than ever given to man and woman in the unifying act of love. I pray you've enjoyed this reflection today, and I'd ask you to return tomorrow as we continue on our spiritual journey during this Christmas time. And so everyone, until next time, may the Lord continue to bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you kindly and bring you peace. God love you.